AMD today announced its new A520 chipset, following up its previous chipsets in the 500 series line, which would include B550 most recently and X570 for it. There was also B550A, but that one doesn't count because it was a rebranded B450 that was made basically exclusively for OEMs so that they could sell something that looked newer than it was. But A520 is sort of new. A520 mostly takes A320, which hasn't really been updated since 2017 when it came out with the first generation of Ryzen CPUs on the first generation of Zen architecture. So today we're going to be going over the differences in the chipsets between A520, A320, B550, and some of the other chipsets that are most relevant right now. And uh, we'll also be talking about some of the future plans for AMD CPU support on these chipsets and what it has most immediately coming out in an official capacity, not rumors in the pipeline for CPUs. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Be Quiet PureBase 500DX. The PureBase 500DX is a new push from Be Quiet into mesh fronted cases that are more thermally focused. The 500DX maintains high build quality and attention to detail for its dust filters, front panel installation, and fan placement, and still has additional focus on noise control. The case comes with three 140mm Pure Wayne's 2 fan stock and has RGB LEDs, but with a physical hardware switch for easy control. Learn more about the Be Quiet Pure Base 500DX at the link in the description below. So we previously did a pretty dedicated video just to chipset differences back when B550 was officially detailed and specified by AMD. If you'd like to see all of that information again down to more of a per I.O. level, per device level, then we'll link that video in the description below. This one's going to recap the basics of that information with a focus on A520, we're not going to go over the whole thing again. So again, if you want the full chipset differences video for your upcoming purchases, we'll link that below. All right, so if you'd forgotten, AMD originally launched Ryzen with a couple of chipsets that sort of stopped getting named or at least stopped getting updates in later years. It launched with A320, which was the ultra budget chipset, X300, and then also a B300, which we almost never really saw. Now, the last three might not sound too familiar, and that's because they stopped getting marketed for the most part. You can technically run Ryzen CPUs without a chipset at all. And so X300 and AB300, those were targeted more to that type of scenario where board real estate became so crucial and limited that the chipset had to be the CPU. It had to do all the I.O. because it's got an I.O. die on it. Uh, and so X300 was AMD's way of saving some space on the motherboard while still getting enough of the I.O. to that type of user. The A320 chipset was an actual chipset. It is on the boards. And that one was among the cheapest available to DIY users. And it's persisted unreplaced until now. You can expect A520 also to be on low-end motherboards, and it should be mostly immediate at this point. The motherboard manufacturers will obviously make them in uh, all shapes and prices, but for the most part, you should be expecting a sub-$100 pricing target for the average A520 motherboard to really fill that budget market. There are some trade-offs, like lack of overclocking support, for example, but this is more for someone who is either on so strict of a budget that they don't have the room to ask for those things, or it's for office types of PCs. Uh, also, these parts will be available through motherboard manufacturers to both DIY enthusiasts and to the OEM market in the immediate future. So this is not an OEM-only gated launch like the Ryzen 4000 series APUs were when they were recently announced, at least the initial ones. Getting straight into the specs, it's pretty simple. And the highlights A520 as only upgrading a few points. The CPU USB support is expanded for 3000 series Ryzen CPUs, marked in small text below the one USB 3.2 Gen 2 text, and nothing else changes here. It doesn't offer any additional USB ports beyond these, at least not without splitting it into lower speed lanes, uh, or using some of the general purpose PCIe lanes to do it. Chipsets allow you, the motherboard manufacturer, not you the user, but the manufacturers to reallocate general purpose lanes to devices as they see fit to populate on the board. The chipset upgrades its general purpose lanes from PCIe 2.x to PCIe Gen 3. That's it for the primary specification differences that are publicly shown for A320. Compared to B550, the largest difference is support of PCIe Gen 4 for PEG, or PCIe graphics, and for CPU storage. Because this is kind of a basic specs video, we're assuming that there might be a wider audience watching this that doesn't know uh, all the stuff that our, our sort of core audience would know. And for those of you who would fit that wider audience segment you're just now buying, your question might be, okay, but do I care about PCIe Gen 4? Just to kind of speed up the conversation, for the most part, the answer is no. 
primarily if you're buying in this price class to begin with. So if you're already looking at A520 as a chipset because B550 is kind of stretching the budget, you're not going to be in a position where your, your video card, even with the 3000 series, is going to care unless they, they, they only put half of the pads on the PCIe slot. So for the most part, the answer is no. Now, a couple of notes here. RTX 3000 is coming out, and that has a very good chance of potentially changing things with regard to PCIe bandwidth and how it gets utilized by the, the video cards coming out at the high end. But again, there's such a price disparity, it's unlikely you care at this price class. Uh, you might care if you're in X570, B550 territory, but we'll have to check the 3000 series to see. We don't actually know right now in an objective sense. Another thing you might care about PCIe Gen 4 for would be uh, high-speed SSDs, like the really high-speed SSDs. That might start to matter. But again, if you're buying that type, that class of SSD, then you are probably also looking into paying more for a motherboard to begin with. For the rest of the differences, the next biggest change is the lack of overclocking support. Uh, B550 and X470, 570, B450, all of those support overclocking the CPUs. AMD CPUs, depending on which generation it is, all core overclocks may or may not help a lot. First gen, they certainly did. Uh, for the APUs, they can help a lot. Athons, they can help a lot. But for the newer 3000 series CPUs, you're really more interested in the overclocking options for other things like infinity fabric tuning and memory tuning more than just all core. So these features do get gated by the chipset, and that's something you should be aware of because overclocking is one of the best ways to try and extract a bit more performance out of the CPU without upgrading it in price class. But that does require a motherboard of a higher tier as well. Although B550 starts pretty cheap, so that's not too bad. AMD also sent us this block diagram to illustrate things. The CPU support doesn't change since that's baked into the CPU and it's represented on the far left side. The link to the chipset is again Gen 3 both ways now, as it is on B550, and the USB options are listed above the chipset. Ultimately, as long as the lanes add up to the same maximum total count, where higher speed I.O. costs the maker, the motherboard maker more lanes, your motherboard maker can configure one of these options listed in the, the chart here. AMD has done us all a favor of using speed ratings instead of USB IF's terrible naming scheme as well, so there's no confusion about Gen 2.1 or 2x2.1 2 or whatever they were calling it. Two SATA 6 gigabit per second ports are also supported off of the chipset alongside four additional PCIe Gen 4 lanes, maybe useful for a capture card or some other type of accessory like a PCIe uh, M.2 riser or something. A choice of two SATA 6 gigabit per second, also known as SATA 3, or uh, two PCIe 3 lanes is also available. And back to our previous chart of chipset differences, B550 gets you extra lanes basically down the entire I.O. listing. Usable PCIe Gen 3 lanes go up to 10 on B550, with options to reconfigure to SATA as needed. As a reminder, this doesn't mean you get the option to reconfigure it yourself. It's again down to the manufacturer to route things on a per design basis. And finally, here's a more technical representation of AMD's graphic. There's no new information here really, just that there are six usable PCIe Gen 3 lanes, whereas B550 again is running 10, X570 runs zero, but it picks up 16 PCIe Gen 4 lanes instead. A520 doesn't have enough total lanes available to run multiple GPUs in an official capacity, as NVIDIA requires by eight for SLI for each card at least, and AMD needs well, more than it'll get here to operate well uh, with its setups anyway. So overall, this is an upgrade not only in the bandwidth of A520 versus A320, but also in terms of the usable PCIe general purpose lane count. Uh, not a huge change, a little bit of one, but this is effectively an A320 re uh, refresh overall. And it's not an entirely new chipset, strictly in terms of the specifications listing. It's, not much has changed. Now, the piece of silicon might be different. We haven't looked at it, so it could physically be a, a new chipset in uh, technical capacity, but this is ultimately a refresh, which isn't a bad thing, um, especially since A320 is getting on three years old now, and some new PCIe general purpose lanes will, will do it some good. Uh, so yeah, A320 was running four PCIe Gen 2 lanes, just for perspective. And as a reminder, Andy told us at its announcement of the 4000 series APUs, when it announced that they were going to OEMs first and only, at least for now, that it would be later releasing a Renoir APU, that'd be the 4000 series APUs, 
for DIY enthusiasts. We don't have any further official information from AMD right now, but the company did explicitly promise that it's working on a DIY uh, enthusiast-facing APU. Maybe one of the other OEM ones will just come to market, or maybe it'll be something entirely new. So uh, that's something to keep an eye out for. It looks like AMD, with that news and with this news today, is trying to get its final run of pre-Zen 3 parts out as quickly as it can so that it can roll into the new stuff relatively smoothly. Now, with A520 preempting that eventual and uh, officially promised launch of the Renoir APUs, that might be a good coupling for it, but we'd have to see once we get the boards or the CPUs. Uh, A520 is really meant for ultra-budget builds. It's meant for things like super cheap office PCs, for example, or systems where you really have no budget, you're not going to do any tweaking with it. We've not really ever used A320 in any major capacity here. We have used it occasionally, but not in a way that uh, it's not like it makes it into most of our builds. Because for a long time now, the B-series boards at the low end, although they're not the best boards, they do fine for the most part, and they're not too expensive if you're looking at B450. B550 changed the game a little bit. So we don't have a lot of experience working with A320, but when we did it, it was mostly to look at VRM thermal limitations with sort of mid-range CPUs. So you do have to be a little bit mindful of the VRM quality of an A520 board if you're buying a higher-end CPU. It's not really meant to, to go that way. Uh, so one final important note. AMD explicitly mentioned, quote, planned support for future Ryzen desktop processors based on the Zen 3 architecture. This is recommitting to its previously controversial Zen 3 uh, doubling back when it, it cut off support for some chipsets and then brought it back. Uh, so it's gotten a bit confusing and muddied because of that, but the AMD website tries to lay it out as cleanly as possible. The AMD website lists support for A520 as present for Ryzen 3000 CPUs and Zen 3 CPUs, which are not to be confused with Ryzen 3000 CPUs if, again, you're, uh, you haven't built a PC for a while. Those are different things. So there's no distinction over whether it be an APU or a CPU in the Zen 3 class, just that Zen 3 architecture containing products will be supported in some capacity. The website does not list support for Ryzen 1000 desktop CPUs, Athlon APUs, like the 3000G, for example, or Ryzen 2000 CPUs, as they are all explicitly listed as unsupported by AMD. Sometimes this stuff works when officially it, it shouldn't on paper, or uh, it looks like it's disallowed when it'll kind of slip through and work on certain motherboards. So that doesn't mean that there won't be an A520 board that's capable of supporting some of these technically unsupported CPUs out there, uh, but officially it's, it's not supposed to be. Uh, supported between them. So that's it for the A520 news. Hopefully that kind of recaps it. Again, for those of you who are newer here to the scene, Zen 3, uh, Zen 2, Zen 1 versus Ryzen 1, 2, and 3, they're sort of offset by one. So Zen 1 was the only one where they lined up, Ryzen 1000 series CPUs and Zen 1 architecture. You had the Ryzen 2000 CPUs, which were a refresh known as Zen Plus, and that's where it gets offset. Ryzen 3000 CPUs are Zen 2, uh, Ryzen 4000 CPUs will be Zen 3, but Ryzen 4000 APUs will not be Zen 3. So uh, the APUs are, are typically offset negative 1 on the naming, just to try and help anyone out who's new to this. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more as always. If you want to pick up our wireframe mouse mats that the first time we stocked them, they sold out in two days. We ordered so many this time that that doesn't look like it's going to happen again, but you can go to store.gamersnexus.net. They are shipping now. If you already have a back order, it will go out within the next few days. And if you want to place an order, uh, you should do it soon because we're sold through more than half of the inventory that we ordered, and we've only just listed them back up for sale again. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.